Dear friends, I want to start off by wishing you a Shabbat Shalom coming from the holiday of Shavuot in the midst of a difficult time seeing what's going on in Israel with the enemy from inside on top of from outside of Israel even here in Montreal and in various cities across North America feeling a new sense of anti-Israel and anti-Semitism I wish you all to have a peaceful, a restful, a recharging Shabbat. It's very fascinating that in this week's portion, we have one of the most important blessings of the Torah. And that is where God had commanded the priests, and not only commanded, but empowered the priests, to bless the Jewish people. And many of you may, may be very familiar with the blessing. You hear it in synagogue, in the Ashkenaz synagogues, you'll hear it every holiday when we call the duchening, when the Kohanim go up and they sing it. It's actually inside the, the daily prayers. Every morning during the repetition it is recited. In many Sephardi synagogues they do it every day even in the diaspora outside of Israel, and that is that God spoke to Moshe and told him, command Aaron and his children and all his descendants that they should bless the Jewish people and say, Yivarechecha Hashem v'yishmerecha, may God bless you and watch over you. Yoer Hashem panav elecha v'chunecha, may God shine his face on you and endow you with grace. Yisa Hashem panave lecha v'yasem lecha shalom, and maybe God be partial towards you and grant you peace. These are very powerful blessings. We are told that when the coin and when the priests give these blessings, they happen and they become reality much quicker than all of the blessings that we find in the Torah. So, it's interesting is where these blessings find their place in the Torah. After two quite lengthy topics, one is of a sota, a wayward woman, a woman who had seemed to be moving away from her loyalty in marriage, straying from it, and it's questionable if she had broken the fidelity of the marriage. And there's a whole process when we had the temple, uh, the husband and wife had to go up to the temple to verify how and what the situation is. Then we have the story of a Nazir, someone who wants to become more holy by staying away from things that they're allowed to partake of which is wine, they don't cut their hair, and even though their motivation is to become holier and more ascetic and, and to move away from worldly physical things, but yet in the Torah it's considered that there, it's not enough for them that they're doing what God wants, they want to add new prohibitions which God didn't feel that had to be given. So there is a certain level of sin in trying to be better than God, in directing your life and what you should interact with. And after these two quite lengthy topics, that's where the blessing of the Kohanim comes in. And there's a very strong message that the blessing of the Kohanim is not only for someone who has reached a high level, that now they deserve to be blessed, but it was given to the Kohanim to bless every single Jew, no matter what their situation no matter if they're trying to be holier, or no matter if they're moving away from even the loyalty in their marriage, the fidelity in their marriage, for both of them equally, this blessing is there. Because when you give a blessing, <clears throat> you hopefully open up within the person a new positive channel and conduit from which they can build themselves up and grow even stronger in their own personal lives and obviously closer to Hashem, closer to God. And I remember so vividly how at various times the Rebbe would encourage everyone at his Fabrengans to bless others. 
And there's a Talmudic statement that says that don't take any blessing that anyone gives you lightly. If someone gives you a blessing, even if they are not a great person, even if they're not a great individual, if they're not a righteous person, they're a simple person, maybe they're not even a good person, but they give you a blessing, don't take it lightly. Because when someone bestows the kindness of blessing someone else, that comes with tremendous powers. When God gave the power to the Kornim to bless, for them it's direct, quick. But every one of us has the power to bless. And we should use it more often. When you meet someone else, bless them. Obviously we start by blessing God. Whenever someone asks us how we're doing, how things are, we say, Baruch Hashem. Blessed be God. Thank God for whatever I am and whatever I have now. But we should learn to bless other people. You see someone, bless them. I, I, there are certain people I meet that every time I see them, the first thing they say is, bless you, bless you, bless you. It's so beautiful. It's such a warm feeling. It, it's it's something, something that's so special. And especially when I know it's coming from their heart. We have to get used to blessing people more. We quickly talk about people, sometimes talk bad about people. We tell people things that they're doing wrong. But how important it is to lift up people. Just give them a blessing. Bless them for life. Bless them for health. Bless them for happiness. Bless them for success in what they're doing. Bless them for nachas from their children. Bless those who need to find a, a marriage partner because you never know your blessing may be the one that tips their mazel in the right direction. Bless them for panas, a good livelihood. Bless people, your family, your friends, just anyone you meet, you will find that when you bless, it is incredible how much effect it has. I've met people who had difficulty with her children or other things and they got a blessing from a simple person and it was clear to them that that blessing materialized because it came from their heart and with sincerity and out of love when Hashem told the Kohen to bless he said bless the Jewish people with love that's the key when you bless someone out of love and out of care your blessing could make the difference let's start blessing people more especially in today's world we got to start blessing each other lifting each other up Jew to Jew, even our neighbors who are not Jewish, bless them. Because we want everyone to be in the same feeling, in the same mood, in the same spirit. And look out for what's good, what's right, what's moral. So, I wish God bless you all. And let's continue blessing each other. Shabbat Shalom, we love you all. Candlelight Time in Montreal this week is 8.07 p.m.